Well, good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Accustats Video Productions is most proud to welcome you to the 2017 Accustats Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. Thank you. Thank you so very much. As always, we are right here in the Aramith Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, the home of Accustats and the birthplace of the Make It Happen series five years ago, as a matter of fact, and we've got 10 of those in the bank, and we got two more coming for you over the next seven and a half days. And again, as always, we've brought six great champions here ready to compete in the Make It Happen round robin format. We're playing eight ball for the first four days, race to 10 uh, games, and the winner of each match will receive $1,000. Now, once we complete, conclude the round robin play after 15 matches, we're going to take the players with the two best overall records, hook them up for one more final match for the championship, and yes, another $1,000. So it's going to be terrific. It's unprecedented what we're doing this week. You're going to get four days of eight ball followed by four days of straight pool. We've got the best players on the planet showcasing two of our game's great traditions, and we're really excited about it, and thank you all for being with us. Certainly, we've also got the best equipment that the industry has to offer, a gorgeous Diamond Pro-Am. We've got Simonis Tour Blue 860 and Aramith Balls. It doesn't get any better than that. And we want to say thanks to those great companies for their continued support of Accustats and of Professional Pool. Lastly, never get to say this enough times, to each and every one of you that have supported us and are here with us again this time, and to all of you in the Make It Happen family that have come to see this live in person, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Without you, we don't get a chance to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 11th time and going on the 12th time, unbelievable, you've made it happen. All right. All right, let's get underway with tonight's evening session. This will be match number three. Our first player is from Glasgow, Scotland. He's just been appointed to Team Europe's Moscone Cup for the second consecutive year. And I don't think it's any secret, and it gives me great, great pleasure to announce that he is the newly crowned and reigning US Open nine ball champion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sponsored by Miyuchi and DigiQ by OB, there's only one eagle eye, and it's Jason Shaw. All right. His opponent from Bernin, Germany. I think I did okay with that. He's a 2017 China Open champion. He's making his first Make It Happen appearance. He's also going to be making his first Moscone Cup appearance on Team Europe with Jason as his teammate. And he's coming off of a top 10 finish at the US Open a couple of weeks ago. Sponsored by Predator and by Czechio. Please welcome Joshua, the killer filler, filler. It's Joshua Filler. Joshua, the killer filler. Okay, let's go, gentlemen. Your referee in charge of this match is Carswell Ransom. Official timekeeper is Miss Julie Ha. And I'm gonna send it to the booth right now to our host for this week, US Open champion, Double J, Jeremy Jones. Go ahead, Jay. Thank you, Kenny, and welcome everyone again to the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. We're here in Edison, New Jersey. I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStats Video Productions, and now just shortly being joined by Kenny Shulman here in the booth. Like Kenny had talked about, this is match three of uh, four days of matches, uh, which we'll be concluding with a final on Tuesday evening at 9.30. Uh, Jason Shaw has won the lag. We're playing a race to 10. Alternate the break. Um, eight ball rules, for the most part, are as take what you make. Uh, there's a 45 second shot clock. Uh, the eight is a winner on the break. Um, and um, besides that, uh, these are these guys' first match. Uh, Filler and Shaw, we had two incredible matches to start the afternoon session between Corey Duell and Dennis Okuyo. Corey won uh, that first match, and then Appleton went on to beat Shane Van Boning in, in the second match. Um, but uh, besides that, we just had some incredible pool in such a short, short, uh, short period of time and, and looking for a lot more, Kenny. Well, Double J, I'll tell you what I think really adds a lot to this is the format of take what you make. We saw that come into play quite a bit in those first two matches. And even dry breaks have presented a few problems, too. There's been a lot of studying going on 
Um, I, uh, you know, I like the format, and you're certainly right when you said we've already seen two really pretty good matches so far. Yeah, just incredible. Uh, and I think the break has slowed down uh, some of these guys on this table. It's, 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 it's made a lot of balls on the break at times, dry on the break at times, and then sometimes result in, resulting in a few clusters, which have been a little problematic for the players. But for the most part, we've seen some just what we expected, some championship pool. Looks like he came up dry, Jeremy. Yeah, and we've, like I said, we've seen a few of those so far this, uh, today on this table. Well, Jeremy, I'm not sure how you approach eight ball. Um, what would be the first thing you would look at coming to the table following a dry break? Are you going to look at where the eight is to try to backplay your your your, your thoughts? Uh, uh, what, just just problems. I look at where where are the potential balls. Pro exactly. Exactly. I mean, the eight is obviously if the eight's in trouble, that's that's one of the things you look at, and how you can uh, take care of issues. Uh, one thing I will allude to real quick that is that Josh, uh, he can really get going. I mean, he can really play at a high pace. Um, I, if I was his opponent, I would like to think that I'm glad I'm playing him alternate the break. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's playing the one opponent in the field that matches him in um, speed as far as get going around the table. Uh, you could say the same thing you just said about J Joshua. You could say it about Jason. Yeah. Um, when he gets on a roll, I mean, he's at the cue ball before it stops rolling from the last shot. Right. And But uh, Joshua's like that, too. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, quite honestly, I've really only got to see Josh play at the U.S. Open. And so nine ball is a little bit of a different game we all know where – you're not going to have as much thought process as you are eight ball, uh, as many things to figure out. So I think you will see overall him slow down a little bit here on the eight ball match, but not a whole lot. And I'll tell you what, he, he got through those seven pretty quick there. Yeah, what he did actually is what we were talking about right after the break. The eight was tied up with a couple of solids. He took his first shot to open them up. And a lot of times that's a good strategy. You you want to you want to attack your problems as early as you can, but you also got to have a little bit of care in doing so to make sure once you start your run, you better get all the way out. Yeah, you know, and you get all them soldiers off the table. There's no defense. Right? Yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I call them uh, too. I, I I referenced that earlier in a in a match talking to Danny that you know when it comes down to the game where you're not running out like maybe both players can't run out the way the balls are laying or whatever you know maybe a few innings into the game and i consider it's called war though to where all right the eight's got to go in the middle though i do know that there you go he got okay. it okay <laughs> i was looking i was like well but yeah i call them so soldiers as well as far as you know you, when you go to war you want to have the most soldiers out there possible but at this level especially when these guys they don't want to start this run and then knock it out that'll be most likely you're losing like 19 out of 20 games yeah. if that's the case so because you really don't anticipate big misses or big uh, unforced errors by the by these types yeah. of players yeah most turnovers are done by position errors more, more so um, than a miss right right Man. I'll tell you though in the first two matches uh all four players. I mean, there were a couple mistakes by Shane where he got to where he had to let the cue ball go and he got a couple unlucky scratches mm -hmm. and whatnot. But all four players played great. But the one, uh, you know, Darren was a, a pretty clean match as well. But yeah. Corey, 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 Corey played really, the best. Yeah, yeah, so far he really played well, yeah. the best overall. Yeah, he did. He did. And I, I think that's, at least to me too, I mean, it's, it's really enjoyable to watch eight ball on a big table at this level sure you know because yeah. it's it's surgical yeah it's surgical and also you know the one difference between big table eight balls just not you still have to play position but pocketing the balls you know the shots become so much right. more difficult now so. you may have fewer clusters and a little more real estate to work but like you said you've still got to make maybe a seven eight nine foot shot 
So right. they have a three foot shot. Right, right. And shooting and off the rail is tougher. Yeah. Reaching you, things. Absolutely everything. And you still yeah. and you still have to have really solid patterns and, and creativity behind it. So he's made one stripe, which isn't going to bode well in this pos position. Uh, you could see how easy the solids are compared to the stripes. Well, he's going to almost have to start with the 10, isn't he? I think now he, I'll tell you one shot he could do and just because the, the, the 11 and uh, come down. What for about the, burying him behind the 15, 13, just shooting the 14? Just because I just don't see the out. I don't see a way to run out to deal with everything. So. The only thing that would scare me to do that is the five hanging if I left him a kick at the five ball. The yeah. reason I like the 11 well, we'll is, see. He, is, is he, he comes here, like you suggested, but at least he also gave himself a chance to, to, to make run. a ball. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, well, I'll tell you what he could have done if he had knocked that one and he didn't like it. He could stick, he him stick him up him, yeah. real well. Yeah. So. Yeah. He frees him. But the key was not to be able to let him see anything just because the solids are so runnable. You know, it's one thing if you had to deal with one ball. Mm hmm. If you're Josh, but you have to deal with not only the nine and the ten, you have to deal with the eight. So with all three of those being problems, I might have looked at maybe ducking. And, and don't get me wrong, at this level, these guys don't think about playing safe. Well, I mean, I, that's I like last resort. So, Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but um, maybe a, a little bit more seasoning might have allowed uh, Joshua to possibly take another 20, 30 seconds and look around. Yeah, and again, you know, you don't expect him to miss, even though it was a really difficult shot. Uh, now, I'm surprised Jason did that. That yeah. seven was makeable into the five. He had plenty of room. He had balls to get on it. I don't think that was really the best thing to do, bump that ball. Now he's got to work twice as hard to open it. Uh, he's going to have to follow down and shoot the five and go into those. Either that or get on the three and go into them. But well, you'll notice coming from behind him, you can get pinned. Well, you could do the three, six, and then play a billiard from the seven to the five and hope you, you know, just separated them. But... Yeah, he's, well, he's really made this tough by bumping that seven. Wow, what a shot. Yeah, well, what a shot. No, he's fine now. The seven goes in the corner. He can float this three in. Seven go by the ten where he's yeah, standing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It goes in long ways. He's looking for the short pocket, but it definitely goes the long route. So. Okay. But I agree with you as far as he didn't need to reposition anything from where they right. laid uh, naturally off the break. But I can understand why he does those things, because the man has so much confidence. He believes he can execute anything he tries, well, and he's not afraid of it. One, well, but and I, I think he's still in a learning process uh, in a lot of things. You know, I, it sounds crazy, right? I, no, no. And, and I don't want it, it to take not. away from our sports. Uh, announcing a, a man that just won the U.S. Open is still in a little bit of a learning process, but. This is a different game, so you know you'll you'll see that in time you just change a shot here and there makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, and and for those of you that don't know about Jason's background too in uh, Scotland, I mean he he's a multi uh, junior world eight ball champion, right. uh, English eight ball kind of like Darren. Um, so eight ball is a very familiar game to him, but that's on the smaller tables too. Sure. But back quickly, since this is kind of, you know, slide the bead right here, uh, back to your point um, about see him, you know, still being getting seasoned. He's 29 years old. As great of a champion as he is, I think we can both agree you never stop learning in this game. Oh. And, and probably, I think, you, you know, you're approaching your late 30s to early 40s when you're sort of hitting your peak. Thereabouts, I think, with your overall skills, yeah, with your brain and everything your, combined, your, your you mind know. and your physical skills. I, I think it's really gone to like every other sport in in the world, uh, where the it's really become a young man's sport. Uh, it used to be like people would say like 29 to like 42 or 43 is your prime, somewhere around there. That combination of experience and still being able to keep your nerves and everything else. But I, if you look around, it seems like it's getting younger and younger all the time. So. Well, it is. And there's young Joshua, by the way. He's all of 20 years old. Yeah. And then we had the 18-year-old Kachi. Kachi that came in top two in the U.S. Open. And uh, he just took Darren's sec championship tournament. For the second, second time. time won yeah, the first one and the last one. Two out of four, yep. I think he won. Yep. But, and I think that's a little bit of the evolution of our game also, like some of the equipment rules and the equipment's gotten so good, like the break. Uh, you just, like playing nine ball. 
you know, with the template racks and stuff like that. You don't, you see guys not have to break balls out as much, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So really, the, the when it comes down to the straight shooting, has really uh, prevailed. Right. The 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 supplemental skill set of the nudging out the ball, the moving the cluster, this and that. It's it's almost going away. It a doesn't little come bit. up very much. It, right, exactly. Not as much. Right, yeah. Not as much. There's a few. Uh, tournaments a year that to where the conditions are still tough uh, US Open the pocket size is still really tough mm -hmm. can break the break rules are really tough to where you still see some a little more of the maneuvering in the game than you used to uh, like you used to excuse me mm -hmm. excuse me for interrupting your train of thought but did you see what Jason just did yeah he, he ran into the seven he's tied up the ten a little bit I mean he can he can get behind it and play it in the side or by the four but he, if he knows the cue ball's going into that seven, he's got to hit it with the proper speed to make sure that what passed. happened didn't happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he was trying to definitely not not allow that to happen, and I think that was really his only opening shot. Uh, so he made a great shot. A little unfortunate, I think, for it to get totally tied up. I mean, it has to get right on that 50 for it not to be easy yeah. on the side. So. But I'll tell you, it's, it, it's a pretty fat, easy bank shot, too, cross side. Yeah, he I needs mean, to get uh, the he, 12 now after this 15. Yeah, That's I, huge. I, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Big trouble. Well, if he has the 11 at all, he'll be no, lucky. I think he's. He, I think he's got the. I don't know if he's got the 11. Does he? Yeah, he's so. got the 11, and there's not a whole lot else he can really do besides that. He's just got to roll have, it in it too. It was that or the nine up in the corner by the one ball. Okay. He's flirting with it every shot, you know. I'm really curious how this would, is going to play out. Would you risk trying to go into the 10-7 right now with the uh, 13 for 12 for insurance? Or well, is the 12 it too doesn't tight? go by the 8. Oh, That's why go. he was trying to get on the 12 after the 15 a second ago. I don't <sighs> believe it goes by the 8. That's why you see him playing the bank here because the future of getting all the way out really is probably playing the 12 right now. Yeah, he's going to have to bank the 10 next. got to watch out for the 8 ball. This. Okay, and from what I've seen, it's, it's going to be a little bit of Jason getting used to the speed. He overran a couple shots already, so. He only warmed up for 10 or 12 minutes. He, he walked in like 20 to 7. He had two or three racks. So. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's hit balls already today, and just as I was talking to him when he He went, wasn't in here hitting balls. I mean, no. maybe, maybe out there, but not on this table. Right, but, uh, but, but he... He's not lazy when it comes to pool. Like uh, I was over there where I feel was hitting a few balls. I said hello to Jason, and, and lo and behold, he's got his cell phone out, and, he, and he's watching another tournament that's going on in Canada right now. So he told me that before. He says, you wouldn't believe a lot of guys don't watch. He said, I watch all the time. He said, I watch every one-pocket tournament that's on the stream, every nine-ball tournament that's all on the stream. He's just constantly trying to improve. Now, is he, he's going to try and attack as far as breaking the seven here, I believe. He doesn't have to hit it hard. Unless he, uh, unless he can get behind it. Yeah, just. Well, that's okay. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, a, that's a lot of wisdom there as far true. as a lot of guys, when they go into breaking balls out. They try to hit both balls. Well, not only you both know. balls, they really want. Hard. Yeah, they frame yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, you know, and you got to understand today's conditions, unless there's multiple balls there, the balls separate real easily. That's right. You know what I mean? So it doesn't take much to yeah. open them up. Right. Yeah, and when you go into two balls, you really only need to go in. If you move one, yeah. the other one's open, yeah, right? Exactly. It's like foot speed playing like three cushion. You know how you bump the ball for right. your third ball and you knock the other one away a foot, foot and a half. That's the kind of break speed you want to look at when you're breaking balls out. And we were talking about uh, Europeans in general and, and, and really the guys that are champions from Europe, the guys that have been great players, um, these are the two games that are really their foundation overall, that being eight ball and then straight pool. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of them, uh, you can believe that they might not show up in nine ball tournaments all the time, but... They're always getting invited to the to the straight pools and the big eight ball events and, and doing really well because they start out playing it. Right. And I think we've talked about this not only here, but all over the place. Having a straight pool basis for your pool game yields good play in all the other disciplines usually because every other discipline 
has a component that comes up in straight pool. Sure. So if you're if you're fundamentally solid and you've got a good straight pool game, you can adapt to just about anything else, and that's true of the Europeans, as as you alluded to. I mean, look at guys like Ralph, Niels, you know, Vandenberg, Thorsten, Thorsten Thomas guys, Hanger, right. Oliver Orman, you know, uh, Darren. I mean, guys like Darren. I mean, not just uh, mainland Europe. The guys in England, you know, they're just sure great players. And the fact that so many of them over there also played eight ball, English eight ball, and there's obviously a, a great similarity in, in that two straight pool. But what I love so much about those two disciplines is the game is between your ears. It's not so much your your arm and your stroke and your power. Yeah. You have to think your way through it rather than the ball's telling you what to shoot. He's made right. two solids and one stripe. No? no, he's made three stripes, uh, and he could be uh, he could be a lot worse off. Uh, he's shaking his head a little bit, but a lot of times you come away with no shot. Now he's got a 15 ball. The 11 goes, the 13 goes. He's going to have to produce on the nine, but you can get trapped off the break a lot worse than this. I know this yeah. is a tough shot. Don't get me wrong, but at yeah, least but it, at least it comes with some reward. Right. He's just got to go side cushion, side cushion for the 13. The speed was excellent. He just undercut it a hair, and the pocket's not going to accept it, even at that speed, when it catches that point on the way in. Uh, actually, it actually, it's a good miss in a way, because it prevents the six from going. Jason's going to have to open the six up at some point. I, think this, uh, I don't think it'll go by the eight, Jeremy. I'm looking right down the no, line into the side. No, but I think it may go by the 11. And I think if he shoots the one right now to open, uh, he shoots the one and opens the 11, I think that's the shot that the six will end up going there by the 11 in the upper left. I was, I'm not sure what he's doing here. That was a big risk there. I don't, I didn't, only reason I don't like that as much is because I know the nine's in a funny spot, but Filler probably is going to get a bank shot to win the game where he may get have gotten no shot That's in right. another way. But right. Or he could play or he short can get side. On, he can get underneath it here. Yeah. I was going to say, he might be able to get underneath it there, but uh, I think he was too worried about hitting the solid coming over. And he might have it in the side. He yeah. might have it in the side, Jeremy. And the one thing about Jason's shot is it wasn't a hanger to draw off that ball. He could have hung that ball he was trying to make could for him. Could have followed it in, yeah. too. Yeah, he's got to watch out for the scratch here if he's drift. Oh, he's oh, what a shot. Boy. You know what we call that? Young eyes. The talent. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's some talent there. Well, he's going to need some talent on this one, too. I mean, he can cut this in, but he's going to, if he can get near the four ball twice across with the cue ball, that would be his best play for the eight, wouldn't it, Jeremy? little bit of inside here. I don't see yeah, it can go around. I don't think it will bite on this table, Kenny. I you think, don't think so? I think what he needs to look at is being able to see some pain on this eight. Just getting a good look at this eight, meaning don't take away from the 13. Make don't the ball. Make the ball. I think he may be able to kill his ball enough to get a thin cut on, on the eight. Oh, great shot. Well... He killed it well. He sure did. He's he's about where I thought he might be, but going going a much better path than, than I thought of. And you're right. Uh, I don't think at the speed I suggested uh, the English would have held. Well, I'll tell you one great thing about the TV tables is usually when one route isn't available, the other one is, meaning like right there, he couldn't get it to check because it won't bite as much on the new felt, but it will kill a lot more, just like he... Uh, it, demonstrated right there with that low a little bit of inside, inside yeah. and, and that's a tough stroke yeah that's well, a real tough and, stroke and the tv table is definitely the one you want because it just i don't know what it is it just gra really grabs that draw off that rail once it hits that rail really really catches a lot of english where if he had tried to go back and forth the tv table is not set up well for that grabbing the inside and trying and to make it go on a natural line. Lengthened exactly. out a little bit off the first rail. Yeah, yeah, you bring in that side pocket across the table, so. Right. Real early in this right. match Let's see now. if Jason takes just a little bit off. I think he hit him too hard last time. You gotta be square and solid here. 80%, 75%. That's perfect, right? That's that, perfect speed, Yeah, I he thought. deserves a ball and off that break. Yeah, he hit him well, yeah. and I tell you, that's every time I've been at a tournament with Jason recently, it seems like to me he figures out the break 
that take that requires the least amount of speed. Now I'm not talking about that's not a baby. He didn't baby him no. by any means. He didn't hit him with the purse like a lot of guys do with the certain brakes and all that. You know, you can do that. But okay, immediately he's going right to the safety again. He's got solids, so what's he got to shoot? Well, he's I agree with what? that. I agree with that, well, but uh, I mean, he, no, I agree. He's probably going to have to play safe, but he better he better do a, a darn fine job. I'll tell you that, or else he's not going to like it. What I'll tell you, Jay, could, well, could he just bump the two enough where the two comes off the cushion and blocks the cue ball from both the 14 and the 12? Well. A computer can do it, but it's not easy. Well, it's not easy, but... I, I may mean, look at coming off the six and laying him on this end rail back here. See, that's what I thought oh, he would he do. Oh, he did great. Great shot. That's what I thought he would do, Jeremy, because anywhere else that he played safe, he was going to let Josh hit a stripe. This way, at least he's got him kicking. Right. And with the way the ball's laid, Jer uh, Jason would love a ball in hand. But there was no future in shooting either bank on the solids the rest no. of his balls are just too tied up and that's a real he made that shot look easy but otherwise i was thinking maybe the six and and get him to yeah. the end rail to where he's got to play safe and it's real hard like like kenny said to play safe period what a great hit hitting the good side of the uh, 14 ball to where he knows the cue ball is coming back to this end rail i would do the same thing here i would roll the cue ball right behind the two and he's got to be a little aware of the 11 as well yeah What's he shooting? The five or the six? Uh, I think he's is he looking at trying to play safe again off the five, off the four. Okay. That, that wasn't well executed at all. He hit that much too thin. He might not have left Joshua a ball he can pocket. Uh, I think he can see the 11. I think the 11 goes by the one in the corner. Oh, yeah, maybe. And actually, sure. see now... He's got enough stripes around that 313 to be able to do something with it. Oh, absolutely. He can, he can, uh, the 10 is the one he's got to get to first. The 13 uh, is not near as much problem with the 12 and the I 14. I think he's going there now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's a little unlucky. He's, he's gotten a little thin on the 10, but he's got to roll this in. He's okay, though, with the 14 you know being what? there. You know what? I would. Roll this in, come straight up the center of the table, not quite halfway, take my cut on the 12 or the 15, and go into the cluster. Or with the 14, 14 being there. Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, he's going to try and hold it for the 12, as yeah, Kenny just, said. Just but a little bit of left, straighten it out. If Perfect. He, if he overruns, he has the 15 as well. Right, right. Shoot the 12 here, and just bump into the three ball. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to hit the 13 because I'd be worried about it tying up with the eight. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to slow the cue ball down enough, so I think make sure you don't baby it too much. That way you get a little more collision. You see like that. Yeah, so. I do, but he got a bad break by that happening. That's why I preferred going into the three, but like you said, maybe he couldn't unless he put the other English on it to square it up. Now at best, if he can see that ball, he's got a bank. I don't see any way he can cut that in jacked up. No. So he's either got to play safe and go down to the end rail, or he's got to bank the 15. Yeah, he's got to go here. Yeah. With his opponent having. Uh, well, I mean, he may. This is game ball right here. Made it. Maybe. Made it. Great shot. Yeah. Now he's just got to chip this in with a little top right English, bringing the cue ball out to. Doesn't want to get a ton of angle on the 13, but if even if we're straight in on the 13, he's fine. He'd be all right. Yeah, straight in's flirting with. Uh, oh, okay. If he has the other corner, oh, I like that yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah, it didn't appear he did. Mm -mm, with the five and the six there. Jason's bad safety cost him this game. I don't. I. I don't object to Jason's choice, but his execution was awful when he carried off of those two balls. Well, you know, the, came yeah, up, come, and trying to get behind that yeah. ball. But a lot of times, though, those safeties, if you lay them on the rail, just kind of like one pocket. You know, if he's got to come with this, some long shot off the end rail, that's what I was talking about, like the opening safety. If he couldn't execute that two ball, getting behind that two, well, you chip off the six and you come to the side of the rail and you kill him down behind the pack. It's mm -hmm. very hard for him to play safe. I don't think he would have had a shot. But the main thing is he has to come long off the end rail. Right. 
And Jason's hardly loose yet. He might have made like four balls or something so far. Right. All he's done, he's played safe, he's kicked. Joshua's done all the shooting. So sure. he's loose now. He's got the speed. Jason's not into the match yet. And there he is, the reigning U.S. Open nine ball champion. We got your counterpart, Co Cosmo, out there in action. He's got to love it. Cosmo can't wait for straight pool. That's his favorite game. He loves doing that. Of course, I do, too. 11 in the side. See, now he hit those maybe 70%, 65. Oh, yeah. Solid square. Nothing's clustered. Nothing's tied up. What do you make? He's made Two and uh, one. three stripes again. And uh and the 10 in the side to open. Yeah, he's going to have to play the 10 in the side just because of the threes there. Right. He can't make the nine and then have a shot right. on the 10, I is don't the, believe. Jer so. Jeremy, you can see better than me from where you are. Is the cue ball going at the eight or the 14th? I with, think with it, a high ball. With a high ball, I think it's going right at the edge of the of the eight. Uh, okay. Uh, so. You want to be careful then. Okay. Is, he he must think the nine? Well, he must think he can get back out for the 10 either in this corner by the two ball or the, or in the side. Uh, I mean, you, if you go by the three. You'd have to play it in the same pocket as the nine. Right, that's what I mean, like with a little speed. But the it, thing is, the nine only has the side, and he's probably not going to get better on it than he is now, right? Well, I don't know. It kind of feel like Could the nine has the, this it, corner it, by the two also. So, oh, I mean, will, yeah, yeah. So, so later on in the rack, he can get a little better, like if he shoots the 10 and gets on the 12 or the 14, and then there's a lot of opening to run the okay. cue ball. Okay, but if you come here at the eight with the cue ball, you got to be careful. Oh, I, I, now if he feels like he can make this and get position on the ten, that's definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. And the ten does go by the no, it goes by the two ball. But the problem is yeah, the now three. The, now he, he didn't get far enough out. Well, he could dead roll it in. He could just roll it in, catch a piece of the three to stop, kind of hold there, and maybe go a little bit past the three, and then you'll have a shot on the fourteen. I don't yeah. think he can afford to do yeah, anything he's, else. He's, well, he was actually looking to see how much of the three, the cue ball. He'd like to hit the three on the number with the cue ball. That'll and keep I it think on the proper, That'll keep it on the proper side to shoot the 14. I think he'll catch just a little bit of it. Yeah, medium uh, medium to slow here. Well, he uh, did that hit one it. needs to go. That one needs to go. It's going to get right on the 50. Yeah, he's on the 50, yeah. Uh, I may don't, have to bank this 14, huh? I'm surprised he didn't just shoot it and take the long distance on the 14. Me too. So. Maybe the angle off the off the uh, object ball would have been different with the slower speed, and he wouldn't have cut the three the way he did. Yeah, I think he really has to bank the fourteen uh, across it, side. I don't. I don't think he can cut the fourteen in the lower yeah, left, that, but I don't that think he has do a, any good. I'd rather cut the twelve as a left left-handed player. Yeah. Julian, there's a camera, uh, excuse me, uh, there's a guy with a light on his phone there, I think, in the back. Cross side Cross with side this. Cross side on the 14. Wow. Ooh. Not really, Jason, what Jason needed, not only uh, to get one on the board, but to, you can loosen know, his arm up a little yeah, here and with get a little more cookies. Yeah, right, and get yeah. a little comfort, yeah. so. The only reason I would have maybe thought about cutting that uh, 12 ball there is he's left-handed. It's an easy reach, and he might have been able to run the cue ball into the eight to no, hold it there for the next one. But lefty was the problem from that angle. If he was righty, it was actually easier. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, look <laughs> at this. Right. Look at this. Uh, his head's not in it if he's making a mistake like that. He's never supposed to do that. Yeah, that was that was pretty surprising there. That uh, Josh, you'll see, kind of jumped out of his chair. Couldn't imagine he was going to get another shot this rack. This looks pretty natural. For, oh, geez, I'm he's surprised. Gonna, I'm surprised. He's going to make it behind the five, I think. I'm surprised he's not cutting it to his left because he's got a natural two rail path. Although obviously, if he misses, the five's hanging. Well, the five's real deep though, so this you is. Think the, he can make them both? Yeah, yeah. I think this is the way. You need a low ball to make no, them both. No, you don't have to with this. With this one, he hit it with a low ball, but. The five was actually laying as you could almost shoot it with any because either it was one. So deep. deep and to the left side. Yeah. So, so, so you, there's room for the other ball to fall right, in. To get going yeah, at yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it maintains its momentum. Yeah. 
Now okay. this is the cut shot you might see. It's a little off angle on the bank, it looks like. Now here you're not going into the eight. You got enough room. Okay, oh, he's banking really? it. He's stiffing it. Now another one that's tough to do on this table with the heat and the newer felt. Oh wow, it really, it really shortened it up. He shortened it up way too much. What he was looking at, though, also was a leave. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But now Jason's got a free look at this one. Well, that well, it's the three in the side. He, okay, I the, think Joshua probably needed to protect against the three in the side, and that's maybe why he undercut the bank. Oh, okay. You know, he didn't want the cue ball leaking out to our left any more than it did. Yeah, and in this situation, he'll learn as well uh, with little things because no reason to try and play safe in that in that situation there. I mean. You're gonna you're gonna lose the game so often trying to play safe and make it. You right, might as well just focus. A yeah, to focus win. on making it. Yeah. Jason got pretty fortunate there that he was able to have a nice shot in the deuce because that could have got real ugly there. And I think he was trying to go behind the two to get shape. I yeah. don't think he was trying to rearrange the ball. No, he wanted so. to go around it and bump the stripe, or miss them both altogether. But you're right. He, he got lucky with the with the kiss. And it's definitely been the speed of the table so far that is uh, that has held Jason back a little bit. All right. Well, that makes the score four to two, and I think Jason should feel pretty fortunate to be this close because yeah. he's played he's made a well few below mistakes. his speed. Yeah. yeah. And if you're just joining us, this is our third match of day one for the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStats Video Productions. I'm joined by tournament director uh, Kenny Shulman's here in the booth. Um, our first two matches at noon today, Corey Toole defeated Dennis Ocullo. And then at 2.30, Darren Appleton de uh, defeated uh, Shane Van, Van Boning. And now we're here at seven, the seven o'clock round with uh, Joshua Filler leading four to two over reigning U.S. Open nine ball champion Jason Shaw. Jason Salt Shaw to break. Let's see if he makes a speed adjustment here, Jeremy. Yeah, I, I would take a little off. Yeah, especially really don't after watching Josh's break. Yeah, I really don't see usually him breaking over hitting him too much. That's no, that just was, like that perfect was good, there. Yeah. Now we'll notice that. Well, the stripes is not the group he wanted, but uh, yeah, a lot's going to depend on that 13 there on the left. If that'll go by the seven, that'll he, help. He can actually play the 15 in the other corner, the lower right as you're looking. Yeah. It'll go by the four, the five, I mean. Yeah, but that requires, even if the 13 goes, that requires having a real full hit on the 13. Right, so unless he can just. Go oh. into him now off oh, the okay. cushion. I can't really see I the angle. I think he's got that full hit we're talking about yeah. right now. Yeah. Now, here's a dicey shot. You'll notice he's got to play position on the 14 here. He's got to reposition the 14 and get a shot on it. Right. So yeah. he can't he can't really get to them other balls. Got to be careful with the speed here. You got to be gentle so the 14 doesn't bounce too much off the cushion. Well, he was, if anything, maybe a little too 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 weak on that, but and he's got the nine. He's got though. the nine. Yeah. yeah, and he knew that, and now he's got a pocket for every one of his balls. But he's already he's got to think now. How do I go from the fourteen to the ten? There's a lot of traffic there. Yeah. I like going coming backwards off the fourteen. I don't he, think he can get to the fourteen next. I think he's on the even, rough angle on the nine. Even, even even if he goes forward about two three feet. Yeah, I mean, he could get a cut on it, but it's not going to be easy. You'll yeah, notice the path may, it was on. Yeah, so. you're right, Jeremy. He had the wrong angle, and he's going to have to just save it for last. And he's going to have to bump this 11 just perfectly, really get an angle, make sure he's not stretched. Uh-oh. If that gets on the rail, uh -oh. he's in trouble. Ooh. Yeah. You may end up seeing a rail first for short side on this 14. Well, yeah, he's going to have to because he's coming at the seven ball here with the cue ball in order to make this. That's what I say, like a short yeah. side, yeah. If he goes real first, look Maybe at this shot. Be Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect. <clears throat> now that's U.S. Open Championship speed right there. Yeah, and a lot of times you'll shoot that shot and you're trying to get ball first to wrap the corner, and when you hit real first, you're a little upset about it because mm -hmm. you know the scratch is possible, but there he played it. 
he played to go rail first and just coast down with a just yeah. an incredible talent and touch. And I think in the back of his mind, he knew I've got a little protection with the seven. You know, if, if I come off the rail a little too much. Yeah, but he still had, the, that seven could have been detrimental well, too. He could have got it right behind it. Yeah. So just just yeah. incredible shooting. And, well, and that's one thing that I think Jason, uh, well, like all these guys, they recover incredibly. But Jason really has a lot in his arsenal to recover with. And that's because he can pocket balls from, from anywhere. So. Well, it, it, from what we've seen, you wouldn't think the match is this close, but it's 4-3. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's anybody's match right now. And but that, it, was, that was big right there for Jason to get uh, just kind of loosened up a little bit, run a few balls, get a little bit more feel of the speed. His break was good. You know, he had that one little cluster. And he was fortunate, Jeremy, that he had that first opening shot on that stripe where he could just come forward and then the 14-15 were Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. The, uh, the real problem uh, got solved early. Right, right. But, you know, that has to happen for you to win at, at this level. Oh, absolutely. Because that's usually what sets one guy apart from the other. They've all got the same abilities. And if uh, Jeremy didn't tell you guys earlier, we are using a uh, specific rack pattern. Did right, you right. tell them about that? So yes, they know? I did. Okay, great. Okay. And I like that because it's equal for everybody. You yeah, know? absolutely. It's either supposed to be the same pattern for everyone or totally random. Right. Uh, so, and the totally yeah. random is hard sometimes when it you're is. playing rack your own. Mm -hmm. So, I well, missed those a little bit, and that, that yeah, uh, it did. showed, yeah. He came up on his stroke, tried to give it a little extra. And as a result, a glancing blow. Now, this is ball in hand behind the line, a scratch on the break. And again, that's one of the rules for make it happen. Uh, kind of like that rule myself. It's old, oh. it's old school eight ball. Yeah, that's definitely uh, the rule I like. I, I've been commenting on it a yep. lot lately that that uh, the, a lot of the pe player people these days, they want to change the rules. Well, they don't realize the guys that came up with all these great games that we played couple hundred years ago they were pretty smart too <laughs> they were pretty yeah. smart guys as well and a great shot yeah. there to open the balls by jason right now he should look at that one ball he should look hey can i take care of this five and get on the one the one doesn't pass the 14 so it he's goes, gonna it goes in the upper right kind of behind where he's standing yeah and it and may it, even go by the six on the side it, maybe it, it might if he can bump the 14 right here yeah that's um, a little risky though I, I i don't think i would play to do that I like that. Yeah, you know why? Because he he could do it with such a, a mild speed. So I agree. My only hesitation would have been the fact that I knew I was going into the eight. He got lucky that the eight didn't take like one more revolution. It really would have caused them some problems with the two and the six. They're both open still. It's a little sticky though, because I don't well, think the six the passes the ten. There. Yeah, it is with the two stripes there, because you you can't get your cue ball into the rail. Is he going to stay right there and shoot the two? I don't think so. No. He's just trying to punch over a little bit. He'd yeah. like to get real. F he's going to try and yeah. get on the two now. And if yeah, not, having three the three. For insurance, right. yeah. yeah. But he's got a really small window to get to on that deuce. Well, you'd be amazed what these guys can do. And he can get on the two next off the three if. if if it doesn't work out now. Yeah, that's a little heavy for the deuce. Yeah, and that's going to create big problems as far as uh, uh, shooting a three to get on the two as well. Well, I think now you almost have to play for the cut on the two. You can't try to get in that gap off of this ball, right? You mean the cut give, come past the eight? No, just go out to the center of the table. Yeah, for sure. And slice but, the but two. I think he's got more angle than you think on the three. He's going to have to pound over. Oh, he's missed it. He picked his head up a little bit, but that's exactly where I knew he was going to go with the cue ball, and that's where he had to go. He could have played the two, drawn into the stripes, and probably had a look at the six. Well, the first thing Joshua's looked at is the 14. I don't think that goes by the three. It does go up upstream. He can't open those two stripes yet and it, I, I almost think of shooting the 12 here maybe go down for the 15 it all depends on really the 14 I'd have to have a better better look at what I could do with that 
but he's put the extension on his cue, so it tells me he the might. The 14 be, goes, it, it, yeah. Uh, yeah, it tells me that goes. Yeah, because he's trying to get. Get I, the angle on the uh, nine to maybe go into the other two oh, stripes. Oh, he's ducking right from the get. Okay. Huh. Well, he's giving, him, he's giving his opponent a pretty good chance here with the cross side bank. Uh, I know he might think it may not offer much after that, but these guys create incredibly, so. He's just going to come try straight across, straight across, just like so. And that's why I would have, I would have really, I might end up trying to do the same thing that Josh did, but I would have had to look around a while before I do that because just like earlier in the last match, I just don't want my opponent, as great as these guys are, I really don't want them to to have almost no opportunity to run out on me if I, if I like to play safe. So... I mean, don't get me wrong, Jason made a great shot and can't take anything away from that, but, you know, I, I don't know. Just kind of believe that uh, there were other options there, but we'll see. We'll see what Josh has to offer in the future. Well, I think you make a very insightful point there, Double J, and I think maybe it's back to what you said when we started the match about seasoning with Josh. And 20 years old, obviously, the world of talent, but that's something that gets embedded over years and years and years of, listen, no one's rushing me here. I've got time. Let me, I always like to walk around the entire pool table. At yeah, least when, it, when the layout has changed from my last inning or what I just saw before my opponent shot, I want to take a stroll around that table and just get a, a line of sight that's different from where I stood. Yeah, well, as far as playing the great players, you know, like you give Jason a look at that bank. Okay. I understand that's hard to keep them off of everything, but you almost have to uh, take the morale right out of them by saying, all right, you can bank this one, but there's no way you can cue it to get shape. Like there, he had options. He could have come behind the balls there. He had a great coming straight across trying to produce. I would have really had to look at and not give it and taking my time. You know, like we talked about soldiers. Well, Josh had seven soldiers in a fight compared to Jason's three, and that's a big advantage, so. And it's almost like getting in a hurry, taking care of a problem. Okay, he wanted, he, he felt like he could try and lay him down behind that ball and take care of his 14-3 problem. Well, his problems aren't that big a problem when you have seven balls on the table and your opponent has three. Your problems can take all the time in the world, and you can still win the game. It's dry break. Yeah. So, see now here, the first thing I'm doing, I'm looking at the eight. I see it's married up to the 15, so the stripes are instantly a problem. But I don't have a solid I can shoot. Yeah. So I'm stuck playing stripes because a lot of times the table's going to tell me what I got to put group I got to play. I think the stripes are okay, though. I, I think, think the they, 15 think goes on the side. Like if you get straight on the 10 and you roll yeah, forward, I think the 15 maybe, goes on the side. I think so. Maybe, but, but he certainly can use the 10 to open it. And he's got... The 11 near a pocket, the 14's near the side. So here, it's really a question of his angle on the nine and, you know, what's he want to do. Now, the 12 ball's a little bit of an issue. Yeah. But I okay. think he's going your way. I, I think 10, 15 solve one problem. Yeah. He's okay and, because the 13, he can drop down for the 12 also. Right. He, he, he can might, do a number of things. The, the 12 will go over by where the one ball is. Right. See, I, if he was uh, trying to go into that, I think that was not the right play. No, he just hit it too now hard. I not, think he was just trying to get behind well, it to play the 12 no, by the 1, and then he has the 15, you see? And he hit it a foot and a half too hard? Yeah, it just kind of went off in his hand a little bit, I think. I I'm really wondering think if he so. was trying to run into it full in the face and stay right mm, there for the 15, but it ugh. doesn't look like he'd be able to see it from yeah, there. Yeah, I don't like his chances yeah. of doing that. I, th I think the 12 by the one was, he was the Yeah, it, huh? he just overcooked it, yeah. Okay. He just kind of took off on him a little bit. Well, if it goes up here in the corner, then maybe uh, he knew what he was doing all along, but he's playing it aside, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it goes in the side. All right, now he's still got to get to the 12, and now the 7 took up just a little bit of that real estate. Yeah, but he should be okay. Uh, there's not... He might have to bank the 12 eventually. Oh, no. I, I go. I no, didn't see the, thir the thirteen. I didn't, I didn't yeah. see it. He was standing in my way. I didn't see it. Yeah, that's why. Sure. The, why yeah. the thirteen is such a key ball. Right. That's too hard. And there's. That's too hard to float down. No, Isn't he's it? good. It's like perfect. Okay. It's like it, perfect. Yeah, another revolution, and it might have been too straight. But yeah, he can float now near the seven. 
And he don't want to get too thin on this 12, and he certainly doesn't want to get flat on it and straight in, but. Okay, that's pretty good. He should be able to go right two rails in between the 7-5 back up for the uh, even eight come, on the side. He could even come right in and run into the 7. And, and the still have is, a and shot. the 6 isn't in the way for the 8 in the side. Oh, he's drawing. What's he going? Three short, rail? Long rail, short rail, or three? I don't know wow. if that was necessary, but maybe the scratch was there. Might have been with a with a soft high ball, yeah. But when, you, when, when you're not afraid of anything, you can play a shot like that, right? Who's afraid of any yeah. uh, of stuff around yeah, here, no, Kenny? <laughs> just us old guys, or one old guy anyway. Well, well you kind of, you know. Joshua, he, you kind of needed that to just temporarily settle things. Set, yeah, and, and grab grab the lead back. He's breaking now. He's got a chance to go two games ahead. Uh, I think he knows he let Jason, you know, get a couple of games that probably he shouldn't have got. Right. Well, I think as far as the six players we have here, the technicians of the game, the guys that are just what I consider true geniuses of, the, of this eight ball game. Uh, Corey, Darren. Corey and Darren. Right. Uh, even even Dennis, I see patterns mm -hmm. that go array uh, that that are just a little bit off. And uh, yeah, here we, we got ha the, We have the yeah, rack track up now, so you can track. see. I, I love this rack track. So they yeah. split the first two, and then they split the next six with a three pack each. And here we are at five four. Yeah, with uh, Feeler winning game nine and now breaking in game ten. Now he scratched in the side on his break last time, remember? So let's see what kind of an adjustment he makes. He uh, he jumped up on it a little bit. Yeah. He didn't hit the one anywhere near full in the face. Yeah, well, it's getting back to I think you're going to see the other four players at times uh, have a few more issues getting through some racks. Uh, and not saying they're not going to get through them, but just have a little more uh, drama involved, if you will, if you may. He made a strike, made the 14 ball. And it's, it's, it's amazing how many times we've seen the ball you make on the break, <laughs> you don't have a shot at your group or an easy one. I mean, all he's got really is a 15 in the side. Yeah, he's got a long 13 ball, but he's not going to shoot that. He'll shoot the 15 whether he wants to draw it and go by the two or just... Uh, I think he just float, float play the 10 or the 11 next. Huh? I'll tell you what, the kid's real natural at just getting down and making yeah. the ball, though. I'll tell you that. I never hit it at that speed. He's got the 12, though, so yeah, he, he can chip the 12 in and just come bump the three and hold his ball right there. There's nothing wrong with that. He's got to figure out the 11, though. Yeah, but if he bumps the three, he can shoot the 13 soft. Right. And roll up either for the 10. I'm not, I am not. don't think the 11 goes by the two, though. No, no the 11 is the one he's got to figure out, and he may end up playing that last. Just depends. Uh, I don't. Okay, he's going. He's oh, gonna, I see. Well, he's doing that because the 11 goes by the eight. Well, and sure. it, well, And if he doesn't get it right, he's got the nine, so. Hit the six and stop. Perfect. Boy, that, that, that was a championship shot right there. I mean. Well, here's his low inside again, just to wrap around the corner, around the four, and come out for the 10. It's not great, but I uh, don't think he can pass on the 11 from here, do you? No, no. I mean, I don't think he can shoot the 10, cut it, and hold it for the 11 in the side. Oh, no. So no, he's got he to yeah. shoot this. And if he comes forward with the cue ball, he's going to run into the four, and you never know what's going to happen. He's looking at the three-rail angle, Jeremy. Is Defin he or I think he's doing your shot. He's just rolling this in and catching the four full and playing short side on the 10. Maybe he's playing for the 10 in the side by the deuce. Ooh, I don't like that. No, I still think it's three rails low inside, but we'll see. Great shot, great touch. Wow. The way he hit that, who's that remind you of? That just the way he hit it, his mannerisms and everything, it reminded me of Jason Shaw. Shaw. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely a Jason shot. And this was really well done, this out. Kenny had talked about these. both these guys are going to be teammates in less than a month. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take either one of them on my side. Long eight, Paul. Ah. He hasn't missed one of these since he was about four years old. Well, I thought you jinxed him right there, Kenny. <laughs> you were confident on that one, though. And now Filler out to a two-game lead again. 
Very important rack coming up here for Jason, you know, 6-5, and then him break, and, you know, back to uh, Joshua for the break. Or he loses this rack, and it's 7-4 with Joshua breaking to get within two of the hill, so, or two of the match. Always seems to be one or two swing games every match that either is going to propel someone further out or going to be doom and gloom. Well, they all count, but there's always one or two you remember, that's for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you if you crap the nine in, it looks like a run out on the score sheet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, real successful the last two times he broke, uh, making the balls in the side just kind of like the 10-ball break. Yeah. Not overhitting them, hitting the cue ball really square. Well, he's get that little hop, but it's... It, it has, Okay. He's going to need the 15, and that's nothing. How's that 13-9 uh, combination? Is that anywhere near on? Um, No, that's not That's not any good. All With right. the 6 there, cutting off half a pocket. Well, I, I was going to say, I mean, the 5 is probably the shot to play here, but there's a ball right, right on this uh, bottom rail, the 7, which yeah, is going to be his trouble ball. At least he's, he's got, got the, the two deuce. and he's the three. He's got the deuce and the three to yeah. get to it, but he's got to shoot the five here. Now it's going to open to the eight up now, just in case he misses this, which I don't see yeah, that but happening. But I don't think he's got another. That's another what ball. I would look at. I would look at the stripes. I'm like, how good are the stripes for me? I know the eight looks like a problem, but with the eleven being there, with the well, eleven, even, even the nine there, you well, can shoot saying, the nine in the side, move the five, you know, and open the pocket. And that's what I mean right. with the 11, oh, yeah, being, yeah, 11 being there. You can get shots on the 9 and 13 sure. very easy to open. You know, playing position on that break shot, you got to have that one beforehand mm -hmm. to, to, to make sure you can hold position real well. But I can't fault him with the solids. None of them are really tied up. It's just that lone 7 ball to get down, down here. And really that makes things a lot easier as far as getting a shot on the 8. And already in just a short period of time here in this match, I can see that uh, that eight ball slows down old young Fillard a little bit at least. Uh, I'm glad to see that, that he doesn't know it all by now. <laughs> yeah. Well, give him another six months. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, he knew it as soon as he hit it. Almost like he picked his head up or he took his eye off it. Well, that's a that's a pardon from the warden right there for Jason. And Jason needs to get these four down here. I don't think he has to start with the 11 unless the 913 is really messed up, but no, we'll see. Me, we already know that the, the 913 can't be messed up. They both go in the corner and they both go in the side. Right, right. But I'm saying like I, I'd want them both for the side if I could with 11 being yeah, there. Yeah, but, but I actually I, I like what he did only because I like getting on the eight from up this end of the table rather than those two just because of where the eight is. A little bit further up the rail. Yeah, yeah, you got more room to maneuver up here. I mean, I'd want to save like maybe the maybe the 10 or the 15 is my last ball before the eight. Well, he's hitting this with a high ball. Okay, he's pounding it a little bit. He needs yeah, that he one to get going to get, though. Yeah, he, well, he's gonna shoot probably the, probably gonna have to shoot the 14 here. Now he's gonna have to ease this ball in though, it, it appears to me. Pierce yeah, coming across it, is kind of uh, a little touchy. I think he'll go into the 10. No, he didn't have to go into okay, the 10. Yeah, okay, of, he, had, he, he, wasn't as thin, he wasn't yeah. as thin as we thought yeah. he either. So. Yeah, we were deceived by the angle, but that's, so that's wants, good. <laughs> I thought he would want to get a little more on the 10 there than the 12. Well, this looks... T well, okay. He got right on the funny zone, didn't well, he? Well, the cue ball is going at the 7. Oh, yeah. He, so, and he's so got to he pound may, it to get up. Yeah. If he, he's got to barely miss the seven and just let the... All right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, he'd have to pound, pound it. it, yeah. But anyway, this is why I kind of like leaving one of these balls up here to get on the eight because you got all that real estate now. On the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking that you, you shoot the 11 as your third to last ball. You got the nine and 13, right. both see, as choices. I see that, you too. Know, so. I see that too, and, and there would have been nothing wrong with playing it that way, Jeremy. I think the point to make as to whether we went, you know, your way up there or what I said down here, is you want to minimize your cue ball travel. So you yeah. want to you want to play in group. sections of the table. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. One group and then the other group. Right. And that 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 applies in, in you know all games, but uh, well maybe not rotation games so much, but 
you kind of want to work in sections if you can. And just the, the, the less your cue ball moves, the more the more success you're going to have. Yeah, and really a unforced error and a and a miss that I don't think anybody in the room saw coming uh, by Young Feeler. No, I think Joshua is probably the most surprised of everybody. Well, we haven't seen anything near the, the top of Jason's game yet. And I'm sure we will before a few more days go by. And um, at least uh, Joshua has shown a few flashes of the brilliance that we know he has. And we can always already tell that he's here because he belongs here. Does he have a shot besides the seven? Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Josh has got to realize that he plays this eight ball and the rules that we've been playing for the most part the last few years to make it to take what you make. And, hey, you come away with a shot. You, you should be happy. You're not going to get three or four options usually. So, and, But a definite tester. But it does come with a big reward. If he makes this, you got to well, believe a he's a... It depends on how it comes off the four. Oh, he missed the four yeah, I didn't altogether. think he was going to hit the cool. four, but look at this. Does this go all the way? Did he get there? I think he's okay. If he'll move his left, well, yeah, he's okay. Uh, we uh, we can already see he's got plenty of room to get to the six. Yeah. Now uh, he's thinking yeah. about the two already, though. He's wondering, like, all right, I got to get get at this two as well. He can do that right there with the well, three. Well, sure, because the three gets you to the four and the five. Yeah. Be interesting to see which way he goes with the four and five, which one he shoots. Uh, I would probably save the five from my last one. I just think there's more room to, to cut that in and then just, you know, go short, long rail, long rail for eight in the side. Well, Leaving I, the four, I if agree. you got a little too straight on it, um, you'd have to draw back a little, play the eight up by the 11. I, I like That's this. easier to get an angle on the five also, shooting the yes. four. You'll see the tens yes. further out from the rail than the nine is. So this makes it to where he can right. come out with the cue ball where he's looking and actually gain an ang a little bit of an angle on right. the five possibly. Right. He doesn't have enough angle on the five to play it now, does he, to get an angle on the four? I'll tell you one thing he could do, though. Now, well, the key about that is... He could play kind of straight in on the, uh, not straight in, but hold his ball maybe even a hair underneath the five from here. I think he's already got his mind made up to shoot the eight in the lower left corner. He's going to play the five, draw it off the rail straight. about two inches, and be straight in on the eight in the corner. You're going to have to pound this, though, right? Okay. And there will definitely is a definite tester here. And a great opening shot in this rack and a great finishing shot in this rack to take uh, a two-game lead at 7-5. to five. <clears throat> Excuse me, by the way, if you'll notice uh, on your screen by the uh, little icon picture of our players to the left of uh, Joshua and the right of Jason, it says 0-0. Zero zero. That's going to be their match record as the uh, eight-ball invitational progresses. So you'll see that's representing wins and losses. We'll, we'll carry that all the way through. Now, I'm not 100% on this, but I'd like to think that, you know, Josh is one of, in one of them rare situations in sports to where he probably is playing one of his heroes right now, I'm guessing. You know, lefties and lefties, both European. Definitely, uh, I've already had a few few people out out in the event and mentioned that, that Jason is definitely one of their one of their heroes, if not their favorite player. I wouldn't doubt it at all if Josh is the same way. So. Very possible. All right, he's got stripes, so he's got the 14 to open with. He's got the cluster down in the kitchen with the 12. No he's problem, got yeah. the two balls near the spot. None of those are problems. They all have the lower left pocket. The nine has a pocket. He's going to have to use the nine probably to open the cluster down there. But the 12 got, you're talking the, about. The 12, yeah. yeah. Well, use the nine as the ball to, to break it to out. To break it out. But With the, the cue ball, is, the, yeah. what, what you, what, where's the insurance? That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, the problem is when you're just breaking one lonely ball down there, that's usually the one you have to gain shape on as well. So, And the eight won't pass the four, so you've got to find a pocket for the eight ball. He's going at it right now. Look at this. I don't know if he planned it that way or not, but he got to it. Uh, he wasn't planning to kiss off the one ball, I'll tell you that. No. And mm -hmm. to have this 
straight in the side after no, that. this is far from straight in. This has got a lot more angle and you think it's just close to it, so. Wow, and a miss. Uh, that was fast even for Jason. Well, you're not gonna beat this kid doing that, Jason. No, you're not gonna beat any Man, of the five here. None of these guys yeah. doing that, yeah. He's got a chance to really tighten the noose here. The six is a funky ball, believe it or not. I mean, from the middle of the table, it isn't. I'm wondering if he's... Yeah, he's he wants to shoot the four because it's tough to get on later, and, and, and there's really nothing wrong with this decision. But the six was the ball he needed to take care of, and I'm glad he thought to do it as soon as possible because you don't want to leave problems like that to the end of the rack. Yeah, and he can get just long distance on this one. That's no mm -hmm. problem at all with the five being there. Okay, uh, I don't know why he would take a chance at that. That's just too risky for me. I just kind of hold my ball on the one, stop my ball. It's got the five in the side. Then you can come up for the three, seven, or the two. Everything's pretty easy from there. Yeah, I agree with you, especially with his ability to shoot long straight shots. We yeah. just made the last two eight balls seven feet away. I mean, to be a great player, you can't be in cinch mode. You can't say, oh, I'm going to cinch this ball. That's the last thing you want to do. But you also have to have the frame of mind that, hey, this is a hanger. I don't have to shoot. He's not going to shoot the one like cinch mode anyway. He was just playing cinch position is what I was getting at. And... uh for all you players out there, a lot of things, it's just make sure you continue the run. When you keep the run going, it's amazing. You usually work it out. So uh, it's when it you get ahead of yourself. Right. Yeah. And when you work out something like that and you get through a rack, it really does a lot for your confidence. Oh, absolutely. That's actually how you become a better player. It's, how, it's uh, what that's, builds your confidence. Is, yeah, it's right. what builds your skills. And you realize, oh, I can do this and now I can do it again. Then right. I can do it even one more time. Right. And before you know it, you become a run out player. Yeah. And now Josh just the eight away from taking a three game lead and really in this race uh, race to 10 uh, alternate to break. He's got, a, got pretty good control on things here. Well, we're gonna have one more match before for you uh, uh, before the night is over, uh, Jeremy. Uh, looks like it's uh, Dennis and Shane. Yeah. And uh, a couple of pretty good eight ball players there, I think. Yeah, two guys that play everything well. Yeah. And uh, both players are 0 and 1. Right. And whoever ends tonight 0 and 2, number one, ain't going to have a good night back at the hotel. And number two, probably has little to no chance of getting to a playoff. Historically, it's rare that a three and two record gets you into the playoff at right. the end. Right. I mean, well, usually this... one loss. It's, this is this is the, this is the cast that this you is can the make, one that yeah. everybody could be three and two. Right, right. You know? But still, though, mathematically, you got to figure you're a huge underdog, and you have to have a lot of help. You have to have things fall down absolutely correctly for you to right. have any chance. Right. right. And we will have, if need be, there are some tiebreakers that we'll get get into later on uh, in the next few days, just as we get closer to that final, what those tiebreakers are and how they how they come about. Uh, but yeah, uh, whoever between Shane and Dennis later on, whoever has to go to go to bed without a win is going to have a, their hands full to get to that final. Nada. It's dry. Yeah, and this is an out that Jason just cannot make a mistake on. He's no, I think, uh, and, and, I think, and they're doable. Well, so. I think the one goes by uh, that uh, 13 up there, and if it does, that makes the run easy. I mean, well, not easy, but routine. Nice opening shot here. The six goes by the ten. Uh, once the four is gone, the eight's got tons of room. And this is just cue ball control here. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the maybe the one, three, five be the last three. Yeah, I like him uh, taking the, the four the, away there for sure. Yeah. yeah. I like that. The four, a lot of times... An eight ball, we had talked about it last match. You don't want a lot of cut on the ball. You want to fall kind of reasonably full, a little bit of angle here, a little bit of angle there. And you'll notice the four was very available to be made in the other pockets. But the, at the same time, the eight covered up 
from getting full on that ball. Right. And you that's were going to have to cut the four exactly. with the eight there. And then you got cue ball movement, a lot of cue ball movement, which is not what you want playing eight ball or not what you want when you're playing your best eight ball. Right. So. So he's just picking his angle here. Yeah. We, and, Danny uh, and I had talked about it, that nine ball is a game of angles, and then you come to playing eight ball, and it's a game of uh, patterns and, and staying real full on your object balls and having a few choices. Right, because having having the, the number of, you know, you, in nine ball, you only have one choice. It's the right. next ball. So you come up with those cut shots a lot because you, you have to play them. Well, to say he needed that is an understatement, but what he needs now is a break and run to put some pressure back on Joss because Joss still has, has the hammer here because he's going to have two opportunities to break for the set. If yeah. Even if Jason wins here, so yeah. if Joss holds serve twice, he wins. Yeah. Well, let's see it. Uh, that would make it eight to seven. That would Josh allow breaks. us to... Nine seven. Yeah, yeah. Let's that say would he allow wins. five more games total if it went hill hill. Yeah, he would at least. Yeah, he would have two more he'd breaks. Have two breaks to win. Yeah. But Jason, uh, Jason now, won the lag, so he'd break in case game. Right, and Jason uh, winning the lag in the alternate break format is the easiest way to make a comeback. Is if you had won the lag, you get more breaks and more opportunities to do so. So, but he definitely needs this one. Well, I like that he's taken just an extra second here. And he's changed think. sides on the break, too. Yeah, he has. Oh. oh it was headed right okay, for the side. Okay, he's made a solid, but he's down here pinned where there's, I don't think he's got to look at a no, solid. He, no. He might be able to hit the two ball. Can, he hit, he, can he hit the two or the three, Jay? He's called the seven, but I'm not sure he can get at the seven. I guess no, he I, can. I think it's three, oh, three, three. ball. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that's a makeable one. More, Much more makeable, but right. still <laughs> tough. Yeah, but you know what? If he makes this, he's definitely going to have a shot on one of those other four solids down there. You would think so. Yeah. He's yeah. still got a lot of issues, The though. only trouble ball for him is the one he's shooting now and, and then the eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah. Great oh, shot. Sweet. And one thing you can learn from well, Jason Shaw right there here? is what's going to uh, happen here. Oh, he's well, he's got the one in the yeah, side. He's almost got to shoot it, don't he? Yeah, but then we're. I, I mean, know, he can't go I know, any. I well, know, he's I know got, it's not easy, but well, the best he can do is hit it with right hand English because he can't hit the left side of the cue ball, so he can't come around. All he can do is go forward and bounce out about three inches, and maybe have to shoot the two or the six next. He's oh, he, he does have the left side. Oh, that's no good. Oh, he got huh, actually kind of no, like perfect. He got lucky. Yeah, he got lucky, but uh, after a great shot on the three, I mean, he deserved a little luck. And uh, He did. Uh, getting back to that three ball, if you want to learn something, and this is something crucial, Jason was in a big situation, something he needed to make one. He got long distance on the only tough shot he really had. And you notice he hit it just clean. He didn't over hit it. A lot of people get long distance on balls. And they want to just add that extra speed to give them a little more guarantee. Well, that's where you make your mistake. More about being accurate than it is about uh, trying to overhit something just because you get a little long distance. So, I mean, I find myself whenever I'm not thinking correctly, overhitting the ball from long distance and uh, really impressive. That's an excellent point, Double J. That's a really good, good sound advice for everybody. Trust what you know how to do. Yeah, Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, if you move the cue ball up three feet, you'd see him just ease it in or, or hit it real clean, like, you know, and it, just because you go three feet further back. Of course, the greatest players in the world, they realize that, but still it helps all all level of players, so. Okay, a big eight ball here. Yeah. Big eight ball for Jason, to, not only to cut it to one game and keep the heat on young filler. Well, if he doesn't make this, I mean, Josh was... Oh. Like I said, Joshua is likely to get out and be breaking for the match, and he's got the 14 to start. And it doesn't look good for the U.S. Open champ here. He played a great rack, and he just come up short on the eight of his position. And it 
caused him to miss. Yeah, and really just... Uh, After that great three ball to open this game up with. Yeah, and just a little bit off the entire match so far, Jason. Just started off real mm -hmm. sluggish with a few un uncharacteristic uh, misses. And then... Uh... Okay, great shot. I'm shooting the 10 in the corner right now, going down for the 9. All these yeah, other balls up. can all go in this lower right pocket. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a cut on the 10, okay, but I think, he can, I think he can still hold for the 9, I though. I think so. Yeah. Just soft hold. He, and if he not, didn't have to. He can save the 9 for last now yeah, if he wants to. he'll draw on the 12 back yeah. for the 9. I don't think he'll wait on the 9. He may. Well, no, I, no I think you're right. I think he will. Yeah, there's no reason to, to go to, down and, and come, then back come back and then yeah, go, yeah, yeah you're right. right. Yeah, I mean, because you can make the eight from anywhere, right? Well, not only that, the nine's very available. It's not in a funny spot on the rail well, exactly. or anything like that. Right. So Now, could, you can play stop, stop here or, well, there's 10,000 ways you could have got those last three. Didn't want to get straight, though. There, that, was a, yeah. that was a little bit of a mental error, just making sure you don't get straight, meaning he's just, all you had to do is pay attention to the shot a little more. That missed eight ball is going to likely cost Jason the set. Not that he was going to win it for sure. We don't know that, but uh, his chances have diminished considerably now. And Joshua, the killer filler, is breaking for the match against the U.S. Open champ. Well, Jeremy, like in nine ball, when you get on the hill, you have such a tendency to overamp your break when you're breaking for the match. How many times have you seen a guy scratch on the break when he's on the hill in nine ball? Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen here, but I'll, I'll you really got to be careful that you don't overcook the break when you're breaking for the last time. And he he didn't do that, he, but I'll tell you, there's another there's a there's ball. another instance or another scenario that's just quite opposite in my mind that I've learned over the years. Like I used to always tell myself, okay, we're playing winter break. I get you eight to five. This is my last break. This is the time not to scratch. And what I would do is I would take something off of it and then not hit my break that's gotten me to eight so far. So I I kind of believe that especially at this level they already know they need to hit it squarely. Thing is, ignore that. Is in my point of view, is ignore it. Well, exactly. And then go to, if you've been breaking them hard, if you've been breaking them, just try and break them the same way right. you've been breaking them the entire time. So. Right. But the key to what you just said, look at this. He's got here. He's ducking. Yeah, he had to. He had yeah. no shot. That's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think yeah, it's about perfect. It is about perfect. But just to finish up that point that you're making, it's an excellent point. You have to have the uh, seasoning, discipline, all of that to remember not to change what got you there. Exactly, you exactly. And, and, and you're right, at the high levels, it probably doesn't happen that much. That's about all he could do was well, hit that, but, um, you know. Believe it or not, I've seen it even even by the greatest players, like, uh, huh? you know, you get a four or five game lead, you got one more break, you kind of worry about, you kind of think to yourself, the only way I can lose this match is to scratch on the break right here or something yeah. like that. And then you kind of hit them with your purse a little bit, and then you don't get the results that, that has gotten you to the hill, right? so. And then the guy hits you with three or four, and yeah. now you're, you're you're tightening up. It's just kind of whatever the right play is, is stick to that. And the right play's gotten you this far in yep. a, a certain way. I think it's it's time to continue that. So Now, if he can gain this shot on the on the 13, I think he can go into the 11 and the 13, and the 12 and remove them both. Uh, he's looking at the two off the 11 off the two in the side. He's still got to do yeah, something. Yeah, but that doesn't help with the uh, ball on the rail, right. the 12 ball. Right. Um, I really think he can get on the 13 you know to what? where he moves them Jeremy, both. Jeremy, how about play the 15 now, get the angle on the 13, 
to run into both of those stripes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, what you were yeah going get to? on the 13 to okay. go into both of those okay. balls. Yeah, and there's a I couple guess. ways to do it. Yeah. You can go into the 11 first and try and remove, or you can go into the 12 first. I like going into the Oh, look at this. That's not horrible either. The reason wow. being is because he had other options to re-break again if he needed, like meaning yeah. the 13. Mm -hmm. So. Well, now he's going to probably shoot the 10 because he's got to leave the ball by the side to break up the 13. Yeah, I guess. I don't know if he can get at the or 13, the, though. I mean the, the 7 12, the 12. Being, with the well, 7. the 7 will go into it. Huh? I don't... Uh, well, I don't, if, uh, at least if the 7 clears, then it'll go up in the corner. Well, that's one good thought about it, but I wouldn't rely on removing the 12 by using the, the, the cue ball after hitting the, the, no, what I'm it'd saying be the I, 11. I would, I would try to either... I if think, I could get the 7 into it... I think he can go by the 7 and get just the just, top of the 12. Just raise it. Oh, okay. Watch out here. Okay. He's okay. He would like to peel this 14 off first. Well, he didn't get hooked on the 13, but he's straight in on it. So yeah. the best he can do is stop and take the long shot. You might as yeah, well. He wants an angle anyway to come across, so that's right. okay. Right. Well, this is mm. about match ball here. Because if he makes this, he's on the 14, and it's pretty much done at that point. And Let's see if he gets by the point. If you like playing great pool, this is the type nope. of shot you should shoot. No you should practice yep. every day. Shooting that, running that ball down the rail, running that ball down the rail, do it a yeah, lot. Especially so. on a diamond. Yeah. Yeah. But he got real fortunate because the way he rattled it, it tied the three up. Jason's got a couple of balls he can open that with. Can he play the 12, two off the 12 I right here? I think it's too far out. Is it? it without, would, uh, without slamming it, huh? Yeah. I think the 12 is too close to the rail and the two is too far away. Maybe he can. I don't think so. It's makeable if you slam it, but I don't think, yeah, like that. Well, so. I guess at, this, easy, at huh? this point, I guess that's, you know, what he had to do. No, it's a good call there, Jeremy. You played a little. <laughs> Well, it's, it's amazing what friction will create, you know, them, them balls hitting each other. They do a lot of amazing things, if you ask me. Well, so you were one of those guys that didn't cut your physics class as a, as a school, school kid, huh? Oh, I never said that. But, <laughs> and I wasn't that great at physics in, in, in high school, believe it or not, but... I do understand the collisions. A lot of people think pool's geometry. It's, it's not, about, it's physics. It's about 20% geometry and about 80% physics yeah. is what I got it at. Yeah, when, when we used to have our referee school do all our teaching, we, we had a whole day, a day and a half strictly on physics, which is really how a tournament referee learns how to make calls, is, right. is, is by the, the reaction of the balls and knowing right. what's going to happen. Yeah, the result yeah. also can, can really determine. Right, uh, right. You have to kind of know, okay, well, if this goes in this direction, it can't be good, you know, yeah. or something like that. It, there's a lot of different ways. but And believe it or not, there's a few mild exceptions to those rules to where you can catch a ball so thin to where you can hit the ball that's next to it and then catch it again and send it backwards. So yeah. you right. have to be on your game unless like you, you are a, usually, Kenny. Well, so. Unless you've got a stop-action camera in your eyes, you're probably never going to be able to see those things, though. Well, I'm sure AccuStats pays for those eye operations that you've had through yeah, the years. They do. So, That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I did but, have that LASIK like 15 years ago. It was the best money I ever spent in my life. Yeah. Oh, it's great. My sister had the uh, RK, I think, our radio keratonomy. Yeah. Or is that it? Yeah, uh, and, I think so. and she ended up not, it ended up going bad on her. Oh, but then my too bad. my brother. Uh, had the Lasix and his game went up like 40 or 50 yeah, percent. Yeah. So I started to see paint that I never saw before. But anyway, oh, that back, was a great hit there back, on the break. All right, back to here. <clears throat> we'll see if young Joshua is going to regret <clears throat> allowing this man back at the table with a chance to put all the heat back on Joshua because he only has one more chance to break. And he's got uh, he's got a problem with the nine. I think it passes the four. If it passes the four, you're not talking about as much of a problem, but he's still going to have to play some position. Now, he's going to go ahead and open this 12 right now, I believe, anyways. That would be, uh, I think, the best play. Yep. And I also believe that the nine will go by the four, it's just, just from the way it appears from here. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm looking at trying to knock the 12 and 15 off and then... Uh, and then trying to gain position on that nine. I'm trying to think which way I would well, really go. Well, you know go. what? 
I would, if I could get the cue ball where it is right now and play to cut to 14 in, yeah, that that's how be. I would go to the nine. Well, then if that's that's the case, I think he's a hair short of perfect there. If that's the case, I might do it now. So, I think anyways. Try to go there now, two rails. He's going three. He's going in between the seven oh, and the one. One's he's big. going to the, the back one, rail. The one's big oh, here, Jeremy. He, I think he's he unfortunate the there. One. I don't think he intended on going in between the one, two. I think oh, I he do. I do. You don't think he was trying to come to the middle of the end rail and go in between the one and nine more than the one, two? The one, no. two is asking a lot. Well, and the reason I say that is, well, because if he went that way and he runs into the one, it can really go bad. If he goes this way and he comes too far, he's still got something he can shoot. Yeah, but if, what if he runs into the one that way, the way he just went? The oh, two rails. Could, if he didn't get hooked, he could shoot the 13. Maybe, yeah, I guess so. But I, I just think though, by the speed he hit it with, I think it went exactly where he was playing it. Although I see your, I see I your path. I wouldn't doubt it, and, yeah. and he hit it incredibly, either way. But it's just not the natural path you take very often. So no. But and he's a, he's you know, he's fearless. He you know. Well, and, and that's yeah. sometimes, a, the, along with Josh, just like uh, a minute ago, I was going to comment, when you have a certain skill level, you kind of feel like you're an escape artist whenever you need it, yeah. like you can call on it whenever you need it. And it yeah. just doesn't, it's a, it's a, this game's a longevity game, so it's a, it's a matter of errors showing up over a long period of time. Straight in the side pocket, this will be 9-8. Jason will be breaking. No, Josh will be breaking yeah. for the last time. And really seems like Josh has uh, outplayed uh, Jason more than just a, a one-game deficit. Uh. It's been like that the whole match. It seems like Josh has had total control of the match, yet he's never... He, he had the three-game lead at 8-5. He had 6-4 mm -hmm. with a chance to go 7-4. He didn't get there that time. Um, I bet he's made twice as many balls as Jason's made. Yeah, and it's just, but that tells me how this is such a true sport. A lot of people don't consider pool sport, but I watch other uh, all the other game sports, and it's the same thing. You feel like, oh, one one side's played so much better than the other, but then they're just within striking distance. It seems like when it comes down to the end. So, yeah, it's like the guy that you know throws the no hitter for eight and two thirds innings, walks two guys, gives up a home run, loses three to two. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I watched Pitched a lot. the Hall of Fame game, and he loses. Yeah, you know? and the, I watched that in the World Series with my Astros. Uh, uh -huh. They had out-hit two of the games they lost. They yeah. out-hit the Dodgers. So it's just a matter of timing. That's all. Oh, oh, we're looking at. Oh, is this five eight ball, ball going? Oh, no, if the eight goes, he wins the match. Yeah, wow. the, we're playing the eight does count on the break. And yeah. I'll tell you what, he couldn't ask for much more of a better spread here to get out. He's got to work. He's going to probably have to shoot the three up long to end this match and then pocket the eight. But you'll well, see the one and two. Not necessarily. I, I mean, I see, you know, maybe seven to the four and the four to the three over yeah, here. But with the 915, with the 915 being there, I'll, I don't mind I short side on the three yeah. at all. And not only <clears> that, then you can play real full on the four ball and you right. don't really have a problem. So. Yeah, your only other way to it would be six in the side and follow at the nine. Well, he'll get these two down. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And then and that's whenever I would go ahead and get on the seven now. Right, I'm not I, worried about yeah. the six too much. Well, right now you already got to know where you're playing the three. Well, you know where you're playing it, but, but how you're going to get there and what ball you're going to get off of it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with short side on the four as well. So I'd just come straight down towards the seven. If I gain a little bit of angle to come across, that's okay. And you know what, too? You could play that. Play short side on the four. Come forward for the three. But if you come too short, you'll have the six. Right. Yeah, and then uh, I'm, I, I still just don't really think it's necessary to get on that three in that lower right. I, it has the... Uh, well, you could get on it in the... Down for upstream where he just made the two. Yeah, well, meanwhile, the this ball goes a little array. Oh, right. He's still fine. Now yeah. he's got the six, seven, four, and three all the way up. No problems. Yeah, he got real fortunate that that didn't snuggle behind the 15. Yeah, I'm real surprised that he went ahead and I'm not saying it wasn't ideal, like if you were a computer, like, oh, I'd love to get the six right here and get it knocked off to get to the seven. But I really think that at least cue ball travel and getting on the seven, mm -hmm. four, three, and then the six last would have been a little better. But, yeah, yeah. Or a little more safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it gave you more options. Yeah. 
He doesn't want to fall dead straight, at, you know, where he's shooting the three off the rail, but no. a little bit of angle may offer either to play short side on the three, like Kenny was talking about for the lower right, or just follow up just a little bit. Uh oh. He's going to be okay, though. Yeah, that's, that's right, okay. That's just barely enough. He may, I don't know. That's a little flat, Jay. No, he's fine. You he, think? Yeah, he can come up. You can, he get, wants to play for a uh, short pocket, but gonna, I, he, he never looked at that uh, upper left-hand corner at all, did he? No. I know it goes in the side by the 13. I'd, but be, then play, I'd be playing it upstream. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. You yeah. don't want to get elevated over the eight, no. shooting the uh, three in the side. It's a little oh, he over hit this. Up. Yeah, a well, he, he didn't want. He wanted to make sure he got the cue ball off the rail. Now he's facing a blind cut. Yeah. I really think the corner was the play, though. Oh, for yeah, sure. Oh, for sure. He just, he just needed to be at the middle diamond. Yeah. And he really didn't even have to get that far off the rail. He could have an inch or two would have been fine. I think if he got more full on it. Still don't. You know, like I always talk about, when these great players are are queuing up to make a, a, a super tough shot, I still think they're going to make it. Like, I, it's hard for me to bet against them, no matter what they're doing. Yeah. You just draw your ball here, huh? Yeah, I think you, you look like you're going to hit the three right on the number, and it looks like with a draw, you're going to hit the 14 full in the face. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is I think he's looking at dead rolling it, and I hate... I, hate I wouldn't roll it. Yeah, I hate relying on the collision between the cue ball and three and then just the roll of the of mm -hmm. the three. I like mm -hmm. just not murdering it with draw, but just controlling it a little more. Or if he hits this a little more speed, oh great shot. Never touch the never nah, touch the perfect. perfect. And the and US young, Open champ has gone down. Yeah, and Young Feeler with an impressive opening win over Jason Shaw and and like I said, we'll, we'll see both these guys again tomorrow. Um for all y'all out there, stay tuned. We have another great match. Uh, both players with a loss already. Dennis Urcullo versus Shane Van Boning. Uh, I really enjoyed it, Kenny. All of us from here at AccuStats Thanks, Video Double Productions. Uh, we're here My for yeah, the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. The future of billiards training is here. Introducing the DigiQ, a small electronic coach that fits inside of a custom rubber housing and attaches to the butt end of any pool, snooker, or carom cue. Simply slide the DigiQ onto the butt end of your cue, push the power button, and then play the game of your choice. The DigiQ constantly monitors your stroke for inconsistencies and gives you immediate feedback by silently vibrating when it detects jab strokes, steering, body English or movement, 
standing up during your stroke. The DigiQ will force you to bear down on every shot. It will condition you to keep your head and body still during your follow through, leading to a lasting improvement in the consistency of your stroke. The DigiQ comes in three different modes, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Get serious about your game. This is Q Training Evolved. Can you beat the DigiQ? Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A Q with a revolutionary X-Shock dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum Q control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only Q that matters.